stop waiting for customers to come to you. You need to go to your customers with products that they want or need, and they maybe just don't know that they need them yet, right? My name is Kimberly Turner and I love all things baking and business. I went from having a home-based bakery to opening a storefront in less than five months, which I successfully grew for nearly seven years. We moved our family back to our home state of Iowa where I restarted my home baking business and started slinging cupcakes at local farmers markets from my renovated cupcake camper. I'm sharing the strategies and services that I use to grow my bakery year after year that you can implement to reach the goals that you want to achieve in your own baking business. Have questions on how to get started or feeling stuck and don't know how to grow? Stick around, I have so much to share. This is the Hey Cupcake Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I wanna talk about a problem that I see that a lot of home bakers have when they're posting in the community groups on Facebook like the groups for bakers, I'm in several of those. And one of the things that I see a lot of is that they're looking for ways to find more customers. A lot of people are baking as a side gig and they're doing it after hours when they get home from their nine to five. And as much as they would love to quit their jobs and be able to focus on baking as their full-time gig, uh, turning that into their main income, they're worried about not having enough orders coming in to cover the bills. So something I want you to think about as a home baker or even as like a storefront owner, if you if you don't have like the foot traffic that you wish you did as a storefront owner, stop waiting for customers to come to you. You need to go to your customers with products that they want or need, and they maybe just don't know that they need them yet, right? So what does that mean? That means you kind of have to always stay a step ahead. Um, It means looking at the calendar, looking at upcoming events, upcoming upcoming holidays, um, maybe that are happening in the next couple of weeks, in the next month, and create an opportunity for your customers to pre-order products for those events or holidays. So an example would be Mother's Day, Teacher Appreciation Week, Easter, Thanksgiving, whatever. Maybe it's a local event. Um, Just always kind of be checking your calendar in the month ahead to see what's happening that you can create products for that your customers will be interested in. So what you can do then is bake a few products, decorate them so that you can take some photos to advertise with, and that will help your customers visualize exactly what you are selling to them. Now, okay, I'm just gonna get on my little soapbox here. I know that there's some people who will take pictures off of Pinterest or Google and use those for marketing, even if it's not their own. And you know, sometimes they'll even say, this is you know, so-and-so's picture, it's not mine, but da 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 I'm just not a huge fan of that because you're marketing a product that you've not made yourself yet. And it's just not an exact example of how yours is gonna turn out. And now people just really want to know exactly what they're getting right down to the packaging sometimes. So it's just going to look better and it's just going to feel right for everyone. If there's no miscommunication or there's no misrepresentation that the end product is clear. And I've also seen in baking groups that a lot of people have gotten into trouble doing that because what happens is um, they're marketing a product that they can't fulfill because they can't make it look like what the images were in their advertising. So they end up producing this subpar product that looks nothing like what they said it was going to, and your customers obviously aren't going to be happy. So it would just be would be worth your time and a little bit of money to go ahead and just bake a couple um, items that you plan to mass produce for this event or this upcoming holiday, so that when you get all those pre-orders, the customers know exactly what you are capable of making for them. So how do you create something with an urgency to pre-order certain products when there's not a holiday coming up. So that could simply be something like posting on your Facebook or Instagram or sending out an email uh, along the lines of, hey, I've got some free time this week. I'm going to whip up some cupcakes or uh, spring floral cakes or some chocolate chip cookies. Who wants to grab a dozen? And then share a link where they can click on it to order right away. And then if you're a home baker, depending on what your regulations are, 
make sure and have a pickup or delivery time and place set up so they know exactly when they can come and get those cookies. And you're just creating an opportunity for people to purchase your products just because. Another point I wanna make is that when you're thinking of products to offer your customers, keep it simple. Um, when coming up with your holiday offers, don't create too many options or products for them to choose from because what you don't want to happen is for you to offer like 10 different products like mini cupcakes, regular cupcakes. You can get those in six packs or you want a four pack. Maybe you want a dozen. You want some chocolate chip cookies? How about frosted sugar cookies? Six inch cake or four inch cake? And then you start putting them in different bundles. So first of all, that's too many choices for your customer to choose from. Second, what you don't want to happen is for you to get 10 orders from 10 different people, each wanting one of each of those things. So then you're gonna get stuck making all these small batches for all these individual products when what you want to happen is to offer just a few items so that you can mass produce three options. So that will look like maybe offering a dozen sugar cookies, a dozen mini cupcakes, or a six inch cake, and then give them an opportunity to bundle those if they want to, or purchase multiple uh, dozens of cupcakes or cookies or several cakes. So that way, when it's time for you to start baking, you're not making 17 different mini batches of products. You can definitely maximize your, your time of making the batter, making the buttercream, baking, decorating, if you're just doing multiple of the same product, of the few products. Now, let's say you do farmer's markets or pop-ups and you never really know how much to bake for each of those events. A great way to minimize the amount of waste that you might have or the amount of overbaking or underbaking is to take pre-orders. You could even provide an incentive by offering a little bit of a discount or some sort of bonus if they pre-order rather than wait to come and purchase the day of. Because what's going to happen? If they haven't put any money down or committed to coming to pick up any products that day of the market, that day is going to come and they're going to be like, well, I just I don't really feel like getting out of, out of the house. Or maybe they don't feel like, you know, they just, they'll just get it next time. Or um, maybe they just completely forget because <laughs> it happens. You know, it's, it may not be intentional. It just could be, you know, an honest mistake or, you know, whatever. But if they have some skin in the game and they've already pre-ordered and pre-paid for these products, they're going to show up. And if by chance they don't, for whatever reason, at least you've gotten paid for those products that you've made. And then you can either arrange another time to meet up with them to get that to them, or, you know, maybe they're just flat out of luck. Another incentive with this idea is that maybe only certain products would be available for pre-order. So if you offer something that's more in demand, but they need to pre-order that, they will absolutely do that rather than waiting for the chance to snag it the day of. So also you could mention that you're only making a certain amount, but if you want to uh, guarantee that you can get some, you can pre-order and I'll set some aside for you. Another example, let's say you have a specific cupcake flavor, um, but maybe you don't make it very often and people love it. So the only way they're gonna guarantee that they can get it is if they pre-order it. And that way they will be guaranteed that flavor when they come to pick it up because they've pre-ordered it. So I hope this gives you some inspiration, gives you some fun ideas so that you're not just sitting around waiting for your email to ding with uh, order requests or waiting for your phone to ring with customers asking for products. You can go to them with options and buy an opportunity. So let me know, was this helpful? Leave me a review, share this with your baking friends, and I will see you on another episode of Hey Cupcake Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the Hey Cupcake Podcast. And I'd love if you would just take a minute to leave a review, share about it on Facebook or Instagram, and let me know which episode has helped you the most. And I'll see you back here next week.